Vivi didn't even hear the yes come out of her mouth. It just slipped out like an exhalation. Her friends cheered. Yay! Thank you, Vivi. You're the best. Wee! A few minutes earlier, Vivi had been sitting in her favorite spot near Wormish Pond, taking an afternoon nap inside her shell. She's a turtle, by the way. When she heard a loud knocking sound. Hello, Vivi! Vivian! Vivi poked her head out into the bright afternoon sunshine. Vivi's friend, Delia, began prattling on about the upcoming annual pond festival. Delia's friends stood around her, nodding. Thing is, we could really use some extra help at the shell decorating station. And we did get rave reviews about your artistic talent at last year's event. Vivi knew where this conversation was going. Without even meaning to, she began to slowly pull her head back inside her shell. Everyone just loved those little... Vivi, is there something wrong with your neck? Vivi popped her head out again. Anywho, Delia continued. But Vivi was distracted, thinking about all the other things to which she'd recently committed. In fact, the very same day of the pond festival, she was supposed to help her cousin make a zen garden, shine her sister's shell for picture day at school, help her uncle collect bugs for a family barbecue, and walk her grandma's pet snail. Vivi's calendar was full. It was more than full. It was bursting at the seams. It was a balloon ready to pop. It was... And of course we thought of you. You're the most reliable turtle we know. You've never said no before. And that brings us here, just after Vivi said yes. Vivi's friends thanked her, said their goodbyes, and went on their way, off to recruit more turtles. Vivi made a mental note to go out for decorating supplies the following day. She'd need paints, stickers, glitter glue, temporary tattoos. What else? What else? Vivi pulled her head back inside her shell and tried to go back to sleep. But moments later, Vivi heard someone else outside her shell. Hello? Vivi reluctantly popped her head out. Standing before her was a tiny turtle. Why, hello. Hello? Where did you come from? Vivi asked, looking around. Nowhere, everywhere. Look, I'm Nobelina, a.k.a. the No Fairy, a.k.a. your new BFF. You don't look like a fairy. Where are your wings? Shouldn't you be flying? With a flourish, Nobelina spread her wings. They sparkled. She lifted into the air and hovered a moment before landing again. What is a no fairy, exactly? Not a no fairy. The no fairy. I meant, my dear, and it's really quite simple. Once someone says yes to something they'd rather say no to 100 times in a row, I'm summoned. It's in my contract. So here I am. Vivi frowned and tried to process this new information. There must be some mistake. That's, that's just not me. The no fairy pulled out a small device. She whipped some reading glasses out of her shell and put them on. It's possible I'm wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. No turtles perfect, you know, Nobelina said as she fiddled with her small contraption. Nope, she said, snapping it shut. You ticked over from 99 times to 100 times saying yes to something you really want to say no to. I I don't remember doing that. Vivi said, feeling defensive. Really? It was just a few minutes ago. 
Vivi looked at her blankly. Your friends asked you to help them with, well, with whatever that was. And I saw your face. You wanted to say no and tuck yourself right back in your shell. But instead, you said... Yes, but they really do need help with that stuff. True, it would be good for them to have help, the No Fairy conceded. And I've helped them with it before. Also true, the fairy said, brushing something off her left wing. So it was the right thing to do to say yes. Aha, that right there. Nobelina said, putting a foot in the air. But turtles have to say yes to doing a lot of things they might not feel like doing, Vivi said, nodding at her own sense of responsibility. Ugh, I can see this is going to be a tough case. <laughs> I've got a wily one. Nobelina said this almost to herself and considered how to proceed. What you say is true, no doubt. We all have to do things we don't feel like doing. Vivi smiled, feeling validated. But only to a certain point. Let me show you something. Nobelina reached into her shell and pulled out a scroll of paper. She unfurled it and pointed at some pictures. Do you see this picture here? Vivi craned her neck to peer at the tiny length of paper. There were three drawings. In the first one, a turtle was climbing upstairs carrying a few snails on its back. The turtle looked happy. In the second drawing, the turtle was looking determined on the stairs, carrying about 25 snails on its back. And in the third drawing, the turtle had tumbled down the stairs with about 100 snails perched on its back. How did all those snails get on that turtle's back? Did they fall from the ceiling? Vivi said, glancing upwards. No, Nobelina said, fluttering her wings. The snails asked the turtle for rides up the stairs. More and more of them. And the turtle kept saying... Nobelina looked at Vivi, waiting for her to finish the thought. But where were they all trying to go? If they needed to get upstairs, why didn't they just take the shellivator? Nobelina shook her head. No. I mean, yes. The turtle kept saying yes. Every time a snail asked for a ride, the turtle said yes. Vivi thought for a moment. Nobelina lifted herself in the air and zipped around in circles, muttering to herself... They said this was going to be a tough job. Some of these yesers will have extra thick shells, but did I listen? I just signed that paperwork like it was... Excuse me. Nobelina stopped fluttering around and landed gently, looking exasperated. So, you think I'm like that turtle? The one with the hundred snails on its back? The one who tumbled down the stairs? Now we're getting somewhere. Vivi was quiet a moment. No is a pretty strong word. I guess I say it to myself a lot, not out loud. I don't say it enough to other turtles. Nobelina packed up the scroll and tucked it away. That's why I'm here. You need help. We're going to run through some exercises. I'm going to ask you to do something, and you are going to say no. Sounds simple enough. Okay, let's get started. Oh, but Vivi, can you go make me a sandwich? I could really use a sandwich. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, I could do that. Vivi started to leave. No, 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 no. Sit back down. That was terrible. Wait. We started? You you started already? I thought you were really asking for a sandwich. Vivi sat back down, flustered. Nobelina smiled. Oh, this is fun already. Let's try again. Vivi, I know it's last minute, and I can see that you're busy with organizing your raincoat closet, but 
I really need some help carrying this enormous boulder through that muddy field. And I could ask my brother, but he lives an extra five minutes away, so... Will you please, please help me, Vivi? Nobelina blinked sweetly. Um, well... This boulder is just so heavy, and I specifically need your help, Vivi. So, would ya? Nobelina asked with wide eyes. Vivi shrugged. Okay, yeah, I, I guess I could help you with the boulder. Vivi! Nobelina shouted. You are supposed to say no. That's the whole point of this. I know, but it's just a pretend boulder anyway, so... Nobelina shook her head. Okay, okay, Vivi said, getting serious. I'm ready. Let's do this. I can do it, I promise. All right, Nobelina said, thinking up a new scenario. Vivi, I know that your friend, Mr. Hechog, is supposed to be visiting soon, but my pet worm... Um, his name is, um, Clark, is sick. And I was wondering if you could take care of him while I just pop out to the pharmacy and pick up his medicine. So, would you do that for me? Vivi's eyes darted around as she formed a response. Well, she began, straightening herself up, can't you take Clark with you to the pharmacy? I could, but he's just so sick. I think it would be much better for him to stay and relax with you. Vivi was getting more and more stressed out. Well, I don't know if... The thing is that... You know I've been looking forward to Mr. Hedgehog's visit for a while now, so... Nobelina narrowed her eyes at Vivi and whispered, Come on, come on! No, Vivi said. I wish I could help you, but I cannot. My dear friend will be here soon, and I cannot take care of your worm, Clark. The no fairy's face broke into a smile, and she clapped her feet together. Yes, that was it. You did it. Vivi beamed. I did, didn't I? Over the next hour, the no fairy helped Vivi learn to say no. Vivi said no to many things. Things like taking out a neighbor's trash because the neighbor was feeling very sleepy and needed a nap. And things like watering her cousin Petunia's plants while she was on vacation, even though Petunia lives an hour's walk away and it's supposed to rain the whole week she's gone. After all the practicing, Vivi was feeling quite proud of herself. Then Nobelina said, Let's take it into the wild. Vivi looked up, alarmed. Or we could just keep practicing. Maybe I could go get you that sandwich. Or maybe we could move a boulder together. Look, there's one right over there, and it's extra muddy. Vivi, you are ready for this. You've put in the work. Let's go see it pay off. Nobelina held out a foot. And when Vivi grasped it, the fairy took off into the air with Vivi along for the ride. They fluttered up and over the pond. Below them, ducks quacked and fish skimmed the surface of the water. Turtles lazed on logs dipped low. Vivi held on tight and gazed out at her beautiful home. Soon they cleared the pond and Nobelina lowered them softly to the ground. They were standing in front of Delia's patch of grass. Delia and her friends were building some booths for the pond festival. They looked up when Nobelina gave Vivi a gentle push forward. Vivi, good to see you. We're just building some things for the festival. Oh, that's great, Vivi said. She glanced at the no fairy who was gesticulating at her, urging her to get on with it. Vivi took a deep breath. The the reason I'm here is, well, to be honest, I really need to... By this time, all the friends had gathered round, interested in what Vivi had to say. They'd never heard her give a speech before. Yes, Delia said, putting down her hammer. 
Unfortunately, I will not be able to be at the shell decorating booth at the Pond Festival. I have some other commitments that day, and as much as I wish I could fit it in, I won't be able to. When Vivi was done, she held her breath. Out of the corner of her eye, she could see Nobelina giddily zipping around in the air. Delia smiled. Oh, that's okay. Thanks for letting us know. We'll see if another turtle might be able to help us out. The other turtles nodded. Vivi let out her breath, full of relief. Delia picked up her hammer, and she and the other turtles returned to their work. Vivi glanced over at Nobelina, who winked at her. Then Nobelina dusted off her feet as if to say, My work here is done. Vivi watched as the other turtles worked on the festival arrangements and realized she was free the rest of the day. Hey, Delia, mind if I help you guys out now? I have some extra time today. Delia grinned and held out a bucket full of tools. Vivi spent the rest of the afternoon with her friends, helping out in a way that left her feeling happy and connected. As she went home that evening, Vivi glanced around to see where Nobelina flew off to. But she couldn't see her anywhere. In fact, Vivi never got another visit from the No Fairy ever again. <laughs>